As second-hand epifluorescent microscopes from laboratories are often available relatively cheaply, more and more amateurs are gaining access to this powerful technique that is mostly used in life science research. By the way, for all of you that do not have an epifluorescent microscope, I will be making a video on how to make a transmitted fluorescent setup for any microscope available out there, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Fluorescent microscopy can for example be used for pond life observation. It's especially useful for staining ciliates as it can help to identify certain species, allows the observation of food vacuoles and you can also stain the DNA. Here's a quick example of a ciliate from the genus Spirostomum that I have stained with an acridin orange dye and then observed with an epifluorescent microscope. You can clearly see the strong green color of the stained DNA. This is the so-called macronucleus, which is responsible for all non-reproductive cell functions. So how do you actually stain your ciliates now? Well, to get good and reproducible results, you will need some equipment to prepare your acridin orange solution from the commonly available powder. You will need a set of microliter pipettes, a precise scale that is capable of weighing just a few milligrams because this is all we need, some glassware with volumetric scaling, distilled water and of course you need your acridin orange powder. Now we need to prepare the AO dilutions. I followed the instructions of Thilo Bauer, a German researcher that often uses this staining for his own research on ciliates. A link to his article is in the video description. First, we weigh 10 mg of acrid in orange and dissolve it in 50 ml of water. We then take 10 microliters of the dilution we just prepared and make a second dilution by pipetting the 10 microliters into 1 ml of water. This is the final working AO dilution we use for staining. The only thing left to do is taking 25 microliters of our pond sample and mixing it with 5 microliters of our final AO dilution. I tend to resuspend the solution once or twice using the pipette. Then I add the cover glass on top and we can basically start observing. Now I turned off my transmitted light source, switched on my epifluorescent Cree LED and started recording with my camera. All of the compartments that have been stained by AO now appear in different colors, ranging from green to orange to red. In this case, the macronucleus containing the DNA has not been stained, but appears as a dark round shape. AO is not the most specific dye when it comes to DNA staining. It may work in one species, but not in others. What has been stained, however, are acidic compartments like lysosomes and food vacuoles inside of the unicellular organism. AO tends to accumulate in these compartments and stains them depending on their internal pH. New lysosomes or food vacuoles are highly acidic which results in AO forming complexes that appear red. Once these compartments become older, they become less acidic and will turn orange and eventually green. AO is quite stable in these compartments which allows prolonged studies of food vacuole behavior. Now we have a close-up of one individual at 750x magnification. Although in these shots the ciliate appears to be very calm, one has to know that AO is quite phototoxic. That means as soon as we hit them with excitation light, radical oxygen species start to form inside of the ciliate, which can lead to its death after only a few seconds. Therefore, it is very important that the AO concentrations are low, which we achieve by a strong AO dilution. Phototoxicity is also reduced by using very little excitation light. That's where dimmable LED comes in handy. And by using high aperture objectives, that collect a lot of light. As AO gives off a lot of fluorescent light, it is possible to mix in some transmitted light to observe the ciliate as a whole. You really need to fine tune the intensity of both light sources to achieve optimal results and to do as little damage as possible to the ciliate. In this case I use DIC in combination with epifluorescence to achieve an overlap of the AO signal and the other structures of the ciliate. You can also see very clearly now that the macronucleus has not been stained by AO. When we quickly switch the LED on and off again, we can observe the AO signals appear and disappear. This is only possible because we use an LED as an excitation light source. The traditional fluorescent light sources like high pressure mercury burners would not allow us to perform this experiment, as they have a warm up and cool down time. I hope you enjoyed this video, feel free to ask questions or give feedback in the comment section below.